Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. When's the last time you saw sunlight? Is Gangnam Style still a thing? Let's go outside. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Robert. And this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about Gen V season one, episodes seven and eight. So we're going to do a spoiler full podcast about the, the last two episodes. It's been a while since we covered anything when it came to Gen V for the fact that a lot of things got in the way. Uh, holidays, everything else, uh, prep, and then uh, just getting together to do this. So, but. Right now, we're going to cover it, so we're going to go right into uh, uh, our coverage for the first episode, or the seventh episode, I should say, sick, and the synopsis for that particular episode is calling all God, you home teamers. Today, we are protesting the socialist Victoria Newman's town hall on campus. Let's show Newman and her super hating woke mob that we won't put up with their anti-superhero agenda. They will not control us. Hashtag make America super great, super again. Hashtag poop lives matter, which is an interesting synopsis, but it's that tradition of what they were doing within this show of uh, prepping us of what was going to happen. Correct. But yeah, and a lot of it was that feeling when you're, you're watching certain scenes, but uh, the, my overall thoughts for this particular episode were literally it's just giving us more information of what Shetty is doing to the kids with the doctor. The thought of it, it was OK. I just thought it was pretty much OK for a penultimate episode for the right. season. But it just continued the story of what we were going through and we're getting more realization of what happens within it like with the virus that they give the kids is pretty nasty and we see the effects and what's going on. We find out it's only through bodily fluids for transmission, but Shetty wants it airborne. So, and then yeah, she wants a highly contagious, highly airborne. She just wants to get rid of everybody. Yeah, literally it's, uh, and then it, she brings it up to Grace Mallory who shows up and we know her from the boys and Shetty actually comes up to her and says and was wanting to get more info of the soups to get the virus to them. And they talk about butcher and Mallory states what Shetty wants to do is pretty much it's a crime. And Hmm. she's pretty much on a long path of destruction and madness. Uh, Mallory talks to someone on the phone that was monitoring the conversation. So I wonder who it was from probably somebody from the boys. And I'm thinking that's who it was, or maybe, well, I don't think she had, uh, she was in touch with, uh, what's her name from, uh, that blows people's heads. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, her. Victoria. Yeah. Newman. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that, it's, a, it it's an interesting, yeah, it was an interesting episode in, in the sense that for the penultimate episode, you got basically this. You, you basically got the revelation that you know Shetty was more interested in trying to destroy all the soups, mm-hmm. um, and what her motivation behind that was. Yeah, because that plane crash that we or that plane thing that we saw Maeve and Homelander on, apparently right. her her husband and her child were on that, and they're dead because of that. So she, it's pretty much her vengeance against anybody who is super correct case. But for me, it was like kind of, you know, what I would say, um, I don't know. It's and spoilers. I think (laughs) one spoiled. (laughs) Yeah. So, right. But you know, you, you see that Kate kills, Shetty, because of course Shetty has been manipulating Kate. Yes, for you know all this time, and Kate finally lost it, and she says, "Screw it, I'm now going to kill all humans." Mm-hmm. Because in her mind now, she, it's the, 
it's that whole thing where people have hurt me, so I'm going to go hurt them back. And, and everybody's that are similar to them. Right. And then yeah. Sam feels exactly the same way. So, um, but I felt like Shetty's, even though Shetty had that motivation and stuff like that, I wish if she was going to be the villain of this whole thing. Yeah. And they are doing a second uh, season. I wish she would have gone into the second season. Mm. That I think that would have made the death probably even more meaningful or more, uh, you know, or whatever it is, because, yeah, you know, again, she's the one trying to come up with this virus. But we later learn that Victoria mm. takes the virus. Yes. For what reason? I do not know. I was thinking that she was trying to destroy it. I'm thinking she is going to try to use it on Homelander. That is a good possibility for the fact that of all the bad news and we do see him spoilers. Yes. For the next episode, we do see Homelander come into the, uh, the right. show. Uh, well, uh, but I mean, what I mean by that is, you know how she was, I, I mean, Homelander in The Boys was just getting out of hand so much. Yeah. And I have a feeling that because, of course, she, you know, she knows Homelander could stop her. Mm -hmm. This is a good way of having a weapon against Homelander, which honestly, you do need one. It's like saying, hey, Superman, to control Superman, Batman has kryptonite. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, he has that. It's always a contingency plan. I got this so right. I can keep him in check. And <laughs> I do not blame him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it, it's 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 going to be interesting to I think to watch the not the, to watch the boys because I have a feeling that this is really going to spill into the boys. I think so too. And we're going to be seeing a lot of stuff when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, with, with this particular episode, though, I just there was a few things that I did enjoy about it. Uh, Sam being told by Little Cricket to stay in, but then again, he gets out of the room. <laughs> and, yeah, and he uh, and everybody's having a party, and he's he's taken in and uh, to the groups that are there. He got that one kid who has no dick now, and. <laughs> they convince them to party and stuff like that. And they're sliding on the ice like Iceman and the X-Men would do, just like they would slide down the hallway. He's drinking beer. He's partying it up on. Uh, with well, them. I mean, when, when you're basically taken away from the public and from everything that a kid would normally enjoy. And all of a sudden, you know, you're like, oh, wow. So this is how life really is, mm. you know. And as a matter of fact, you know, um, Oh, what's her name? <laughs> um, the girl that shrinks. Oh, oh little cricket. God. Little no, but she has a name. I mean, Same. oh, I forgot her name now. <laughs> oh my god. Um, da, 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 whatever it is, uh, Emma. That's okay. her name. Um, Emma. I know Emma's trying to protect him. Mm -hmm. Um, but he just feels like oh you're keeping me away from the stuff that i should have been doing i mean mm -hmm. the, you know life i the life i should have been enjoying yeah and i understand i kind of understand him but at the same time i understand her because he's too trying much. to be protective correct to him. yeah right exactly so yeah they it, i it just all rolls into that uh, he, he's you know being influenced by everybody else around the school. So he's dragged to that uh, Cameron Coleman show after uh, after polarity uh, with with polarity, I guess. Uh, well, after polarity freaked out and stuff and Victoria Newman shows up to defend people and super able people or the super able community with her pledge for rights in the government. But mm -hmm. they're and it's the typical rallying of the kids there, and the kids don't know she's a soup. <laughs> no, they don't because I think if they did, 
then they wouldn't have reacted, I think, the way they did. The way they did, exactly. Right. And but it, it shows that, you know, they they saw her as a regular human and the what she was trying to present to them is what a human would do, but she's trying to do it in equality for the government and for all communities at that point. But they don't see it that way. And it's the extremism of one section of a group towards another right. section of a group that we've seen in society for you know th- like over a thousand years obviously every <laughs> major uh major community in in the world over the uh, the history that we have as humans have suffered with like two adversities you know there were two right. adversity groups and this just shows it and it's just in your face but you could see it from both point of views, the way it's been filmed and the way it's been written. It's interesting, but it's literally it's just shoving it down our throats, I think, at times. Because it's been done <laughs> before. But right. it's it's nice. It's like, oh, okay, well, it, at least it's only one scene. It's not like something that's ongoing because we've seen it in Watchmen. We've seen it the Watchmen show that was on HBO. Mm-hmm. We've seen it on uh, the, the Walking Dead did that, too, because he had two several different groups that had opposing sides. Right. You know, you know, who's right and who's wrong, who's the better community, who's not and who's leading by a good example. And each has their own issues. Right. Same thing with the if you look at liberals, Republicans or independents, things of that nature, too, because everybody has their views. I'm not trying to be political, everybody, but I'm just stating it's it's that same that same concept. Right. Uh, but we do get that. And then during that whole thing, that's when everything starts to go a little crazy uh, after Victoria did that because of the they think it's basically riot. <laughs> And uh, and during that, within that time, you know, and after it, I think uh, it moves into where uh, Marie finds out that uh, Victoria is a soup. And then she finds out that she has the same powers. Marie has the same powers as Victoria Newman. Well, we kind of all find out that because at first we, we knew she was a soup. Mm-hmm. We just didn't know what type of soup. We I think we assumed that she was probably like a telekinetic. Yes. Uh, when she was blowing up heads left and right. Um, we just didn't know she was like a bloodbender mm-hmm. until, you know, she revealed it to Marie. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And uh, of course, you know, you already spoke about it, the, the meeting where she gets the <laughs> it's it's after uh, Kate's having t- uh, touching Shetty and then Tell, having her tell everybody exactly what she is and what she did and everything else. Right. But uh, you already brought it up about doc, Dr. Cardoza and that's when we see his head pop <laughs> after she gets the, uh, the suitcase. You kind of knew, look, you, you kind of knew that was going to happen because as soon as she asked are you the only one that knows how to make this? Yeah. And he said yes. I went, oh, he's dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, he was dead after he was pissing in Chetty's liquor bottle. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that one scene, that's nasty. <laughs> no, I don't. I doubt she would ever drink that stuff, but who knows? Oh, I don't think she will now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, there's a few quotes in here just to sum up before that I have, which are funny and, and interesting. Sam uh, talking to Emma about it. He goes, I did, however, rip a person in half. In my defense, he was a puppet at the time. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I just like, but then when like, and then you think back, oh yeah, he massacred those puppets, knowing that it was real people. Yeah, but like the, I think the best part of that is that your imagination can kind of run free, and as he's killing and tearing apart the the you know the Muppets. <laughs> you can only imagine <laughs> what he's doing to the real people. <laughs> exactly. And it always sees glitter. And I think I still think that had to do with like uh they didn't want to pay for that much special effects for the blood, or they were just trying to tone it down, just slightly put a little humor into it. <laughs> right. No, I think it's more of a let me see. It's gonna cost us less to actually do uh <laughs> Just a Muppet with glitter. <laughs> Just a Muppet with the glitter than to actually do a whole bunch of CG blood and all that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, one thing that I did like, and this is between, I uh, like was, and it's a funny quote too. 
uh, it's Sam and Emma, and he and he goes through her panty drawer before she comes in. I and thought that was interesting. <laughs> multiple size of underwears for whatever size she chooses. Yeah. From like little, little, little doll to all the way to regular person. And but then he puts on then he puts on a pair of underwear with two fingers and he like that's the part that was like, okay, this kid is weird. <laughs> well, that kid is weird to the fact that he never really got to grow up. So you can understand right. it from his point of view. And I think <laughs> in my in my mind, I'm looking at him going, he has the mentality of like a 10 year old. He doesn't really know. <laughs> He probably like when he got an erection when he was with her and he lost his virginity. Forget it. He goes, I like that. He, <laughs> that never happened to him before. But I, I just love how she just he's going through her stuff in front of her before she right. leaves him. And he's picking up like these multiple different like dildos, vibrators and everything. And she goes, oh, it's a reasonable amount of sex toys. <laughs> for a you woman got, my age <laughs> you gotta have variety <laughs> you gotta have variety oh man and i and there was one from uh maverick to emma as he comes looking for sam and he goes i'm not a find your friends app stop cock blocking me and leave and that's when he's got the llama in the back when he's got like a, <laughs> a fucking weird kid man invisible boy yeah oh man and then uh, Marie, the last one I have would be Marie going, do you know what you have done to Sam? And then uh, and then Sam goes, justice. And of like that typical reaction of anybody who's going for what they really need to, what we pretty much discussed. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, did you have anything more on this particular episode or? Um, I mean, the only thing. Uh we find out that the school has always been a front for experiments what? on soups. And it's just a front. Like, it's just like, Hey, we're going to make it a school, but honestly it's to bring in soups so they can then study them. Yeah. And stuff like that. So that was really messed up. I thought, wow. Okay. Yeah. I was like, wow. So that's, it wasn't about developing these kids. It was more about exploiting these kids. So, yeah. So that was like one of the things that really stood out for me. Um, I also kind of. So when Sam escapes from the room and goes into the hallway. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, he sees the kid using his freeze uh, abilities. And he's like, um, aren't we going to get in trouble about that and stuff like that? And. The girl says, we're soups. We could do anything we want. To me, yeah, um, that was a metaphor for we are rich. We can do whatever we want. In the sense of they're rich with power, they could, you know, and it's right. the same thing. That's with, what I'm saying. And, yeah. And also, it all, uh, that actually is a mentality, too, of people who have money itself. A lot of people who act, exactly. Have, have so that's how I see. Yeah, that's how I saw it as when she said. Oh, we're soups. We could do whatever we want. I was like, that sounds a lot like, hey, um, my parents are really rich. <laughs> and because they're rich and, you know, they're they're probably titans of industry, fucking senators and all kinds of shit. We could do whatever the hell we want and we could get away with it. And that's what that reminded me of where at that point, honestly, there was a and mind you. I had a few glasses of wine in me. <laughs> Uh, but at that point, I was like, you know what? I understand Shetty now. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, you know, sometimes you just got to get rid of a few of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but that means that, you know, it's just, um, yeah, I think that was the biggest, oh, that was one of the big things that stood out to me. It's just like, wow, it's just the way these kids are being led to believe that. But at the same time they are too naive and stupid to know that they're being used as experiments. Very true. So, and yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, let me see here. I mean, Marie finding the files on the plane destroyed by Homelander, which turns out to be Shetty's family, you know, that was in it. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the big thing there. So um, it was never really 
said outrightly that that was what happened. They didn't even use a flashback, I believe. No, they didn't. So you kind of picked it together. So you had to be a fan of the boys while watching you, this. Exactly. So listeners that are just watching this, and yes, like we said, spoilers, but uh, it'll be spoiled for the fact if you go see the boys now and start watching those seasons before, that's what happens prime. And I think within the first season. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, oh, but yeah, obviously yeah. people who I are think watching it was a, Gen V are, are fans. I think it was for the first few episodes. Yeah. Uh, I, I still remember that episode very clearly because he just, you know, the airplane's about to fall and it's all this stuff. And mm-hmm. he's just like, why should we save them? And <laughs> just kind of leaves. And, uh, who was the Queen Maeve? Queen- Queen Maeve was even in disbelief that he was going to do that. Well, she wouldn't have been able to get off the uh, plane anyway. He was going to just leave her there, even though she's indestructible. But right. In order to get off that plane, she needed him to fly her off, which is what happened at that point, too. Right. They literally were, well, this is pointless and useless. We can't stop it. It's going to crash anyway. He goes, let me just kill these people and then let's go. And she was trying to be somebody who is being moral and empathetic right. and, and a hero, but looked at him going, you're a crazy son of a bitch. And I'm stuck with you because I can't get a, anybody else to fly me off this crazy plane. <laughs> As you and yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Th- yeah. I had to point that out too, because a lot of people, uh, somebody had asked me that and I'm like, well, you didn't see the boys. And they're like, no, I was like, go watch the boys. That's it was referencing that. And they were like, oh, I got to watch that whole series. I'm like, but you watch Gen V. <laughs> well, you're not watching the original, but which the, is what? Yeah. Right. Because they thought, like you said before, and you've kind of uh, alluded to it, that it kind of gives you that feel of Professor X's mansion and then having all the kids there. And it's like Correct. an academy for that, which it does reflect a lot. It's like uh, Professor Professor X is like a school for gifted youngsters on acid with. <laughs> yeah, it's more of the right. Uh, I, how can I say? Um, I think Professor. But the thing is that, you know, the X mansion is not. A place where they're looking to get what I would say. Um, exposure. No. You know, no, they're tra- it's the because complete opposite. It's complete to opposite, be a right? secret. Yeah. Yeah. It, because they're really trying to protect, you know, these kids with, you know, new mutant powers and, you know, and th- so they could get, you know, adjusted to it and give them an education. All these things that they're trying to protect these kids from. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this school is not about that. The school is about let it be exposed and, you know, and of course about social media, who's, you know, trending in social media and all these things. Mm-hmm. So, but kind of, you know, the only thing that, you know, I wish I would have seen like it. Well, how can I say the X mansion has the danger room. These guys have the woods. (laughs) It's all the opposite. So because the danger room is really meant to have these, yeah, hone their abilities, have them show how to, you know, use it. And here it's all about how can I, you know, exploit these kids and, (laughs) <laughs> study them and just put them through the worst thing possible so yeah so there's a lot of parallels uh with marvel and dc with the uh with the, you know um gen v and the boys which i find really interesting i find it fun to do that on occasion just because you know obviously kids with powers and you know it just reminds you of the x-men because you know obviously they were mutated even in x-men they're mutants they never really right. explained how uh, over the years through uh, Marvel Comics, they made it like, oh, they're a derivative of the Inhumans or, or an Inhuman body or whatever. And right. they changed it over time. Uh, it's also something that I believe that MCU is trying to dabble with as well with, with certain events and things of that nature. But that that's Marvel. This is this. But it's cool to give those comparisons and look. And it's good. It's a good way to actually get into a discussion with somebody because if you're not into Marvel, but you're into this, you could have something to talk about too, right? <laughs> and, and the great thing about watching this, um, 
because I do I do it all the time. Every time I watch it and I see somebody using their powers, I go, who did they get those powers from? What yeah. character in DC or Marvel? <laughs> and I have seen everything from Black Canary, uh, you know, doing the uh, voice thing to, you know, of course, a normal Superman and uh, the Flash and all these things, you know. So there's so, there's so many different uh characters with the powers that you have seen in comic books from major comic books yeah yeah so no originality you're saying <laughs> think about well, it you it, know it, what i mean it's so number it's, four so they're just yeah they're, well it, the question is so the blood uh where have you seen the blood part i would say you more know? from maybe like carnage or something i don't think he was more blood based but well he's a symbiote He's a symbiote of yeah, uh, yeah, a crazy person that kills. But that's the only thing I could give some sort of comparison to. But honestly, uh, I think that would probably be more of the most original. Right. Would, you know, I would say out of like the powers that were out there, it's like, but it's kind of a sick one. So it's more <laughs> out of a horror book <laughs> than anything. Yeah. I mean, listen, if anybody out there knows what superhero in which uh publication whether it's marvel dc image uh, independent Boom Comet, Comet, independent anything. right i mean where does the blood or what superhero out there has that type of ability yeah. let us know on that because i'll be very curious i personally don't know of any me neither I, I was trying to come up with something and I couldn't. Yeah, because like the kid, look, you have a you have one kid that can manipulate metal. So that to me is Magneto. Correct. Um, the gender, the Little gender, it's like Ant-Man and right. And giant man and stuff like that. The the Jordan uh, Lee, the the gender bending. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Uh, that might be an original thing. I think so. That gender bending thing, I think, was like a um, pretty much something that they thought original, which is pretty interesting. I like it, but both characters, they have like whether Jordan is a uh, male or female. Apparently, the powers are a little bit different, like in the girl form, strong, super strong. Right. But we didn't really see any of that from when he was when they were male. So okay. It's, kind of strange i i'm i was hoping to see a little bit more it's like oh okay i could do this in this form but in this form i'm different yeah i mean i mean i know that i know what they were trying to do with uh the gender bending i mean that was more of a social commentary on i think on transgender uh uh people that or people that are going through you know the whole trans uh thing um but i'm wondering if they also got it from you know they if it's still part or a variation of something in in a uh, comic book. Yeah, I would like to know that too. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, and like you said, a lot of the similarities were there too. We've seen that. We actually mentioned that too in the boys when we covered that. Oh, and the boys is a crap load. I mean, I think just the uh, <laughs> just the uh, what is it? The uh the the five? Yeah. Are basically the Justice League. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, the five out of the seven. <laughs> Or the, it's the seven, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so in, you got in the boys, right? Because you got Homelander, who's Superman. You got you Maeve, got, who's, who's Wonder Woman, right? And, and then it, uh, the Deep, uh, who's Aquaman, right? And then uh, who's the kid that runs really fast? Is Flash? Yep. A Train. A Train. And then the other guy who's always dressed in black, I believe. Noir. Maybe Bat. Yeah, Noir, like Batman. Batman, but it's he's yeah because he does bleed. He can he what was killed? Spoilers, everybody. Right, but uh, he was also a little crazy, and I, <laughs> I and ha, and it kind of gave that snake eyes image from like GI Joe. I was just gonna say <laughs> he's kind of a combination of Batman and Snake Eyes or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it's more of his cunning and his ability to kill and be unseen. I don't right. Know. Now the the girl with the blonde girl, I forget her name. Starlight. Um, Starlight. Who I'm getting she... the names off the top of my head too, and I have like no notes or anything because I'm like, we talk about the boys. I gotta remember these names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Starlight, it was an interesting one because it was more about light. 
But there are superheroes about light because if you think about like let's say Dazzler, you think about um Dagger yeah. from Cloak and Dagger, mm-hmm. um, those are all superheroes that have like light based uh powers. Very true. Right. So but I'm just wondering who if there was another one that she really like, I was uh, thinking Adam Eve, maybe from Invincible, but I think uh, Eve's powers are light based, but she can change objects to. Well, she manipulates physical. objects to other yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Because let me tell you, if I knew, I, if I if I knew somebody like uh, Adam Eve, I'd be like, listen, <laughs> just take this cinder block, convert it into gold, and that takes care of all my problems. <laughs> exactly. Well, she does do that to her friends. Though. I think the to her, mean, to her to her parents, and her parents uh, rejected yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That her parents did. She did that for her parents, but she also did something with a plant on a tree to make it beer or alcohol too. Oh, something like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. listen, it's the best type of friend to have around. But. <laughs> <laughs> do me a favor, do this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, but, you got Starlight. So yeah, yeah, yeah just of them. yeah, just kind of wondering what you know because the in the. Uh, in Gen V, you could kind of see a lot of, okay, this this simulates this, this simulates this. Um, some of them were creepy. So when they went out into what is it the uh, the woods to free all the inmates, there was that girl that was just sitting in the dark with her eyes glowing in white, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, I don't know who that is, but that is just creepy looking. Um. And you could tell just, I mean, the way they did it, you're like, these are just some unstable people that should not get out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, these are the people that we lock up in, in a rubber room. <laughs> yeah, this is, no, this is no longer about, oh, they're going after soups. No, you are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and you need to be locked up and medicated. <laughs> which which kind of leads us to because we got to talk about it. Episode eight, which is yeah. uh, Guardians of Godolkin. So, this is what we're leading up to, which is the uh, finale, the season finale for Gen V, season one. So the synopsis for this one, which is very interesting, it says, if you or a human loved one have been injured or killed while working at Godolkin University, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Hundreds of human employees have been victimized by Godolkin students, but the <laughs> law offices of Brummer and Brummer have won the millions in personal injury and wrongful death lawsuits contact us for free consultation at 1-888-177-2774 know your rights (laughs) so i just love i i have to say it in like some sort of tv announcer voice or something to the way they put these out there and i read it at uh, when these episodes are coming up and i was watching i read them that like that too in my head <laughs> and i just laugh at it but i just love how they came up it was an interesting concept for the show and how they were able to uh give us a synopsis i like it very much other than the where we get with like loki and and disney plus where they give you that like short cute quick sentence and it's like okay uh all vague <laughs> yeah, they were yeah, exactly. They were just very creative about it. So yeah. But episode eight was also very interesting. A- episode eight is where everything just comes to a head. Yeah, yeah, I agree. This is one uh I would say it was probably one of my favorite episodes, not because it was the finale <laughs> and it ended. And I'm not saying oh it, it finally ended. Oh, that was a chore. But I'm just saying <laughs> that it's uh it's like okay, we come to our conclusion, but we get so many cool things in this. We got two cameos that are amazing in it. One of which, one of my favorite actors that are out there, Colby Minifee, back as Ashley, uh, uh, who is, you know, in charge of Vaught, you know, Ashley Barrett. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. And I still can't, uh, I, I still keep looking out going, is that a wig? Is that a wig? Because, you know, she doesn't have much hair after the boys. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we get a, a, a couple of funny moments regarding that. Because of what's happening at the right. uh, school at that point, everything goes to a head. Like you said, uh, I I did enjoy it, but it does give us a setup. This particular episode is what we were talking about, or Rob was talking about before, about a setup for the next season of the boys, which I believe they are they finalize filming or they're finishing up filming. 
because they went back into production after uh, the all the strikes and everything that was going on with SAG-AFTRA and uh, the WGA. Right. So yeah, they uh, we've been I've been looking forward to that uh, for that to come out. I've seen stuff posted by Jeffrey D. Morgan, who apparently is in this season of The Boys. We got uh, oh Randy Quaid posting things as well, but apparently they were also on another project in Atlanta, him and Jeffrey D. Morgan. So I'm curious right. as to what that is. Uh, but all the other cast matter uh, cast mates that they have also did it, like Anthony Starr. Is it he who plays Homelander? He he'd been posting, but somebody posted recently. It's like don't do your own stunts, and I think they ripped it off of Anthony Starr's only uh, his Instagram, right? And it's him in this particular episode, and he goes, "Why am I doing this? Why?" And they're just hoisting him all the way back up to do another shot, and it's like that's beyond like twenty five feet. That had to be at least fifty feet up in the air. I'd be pooping my pants <laughs> because of like the harnesses. They must have had him harnessed and the insurance on that alone must have been great because literally below him was ground <laughs> in that crane. <laughs> and this was for what scene? The end of this particular episode. Oh, you're talking about um, Homelander. Homelander. Oh, Anthony okay. Starr. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> was he up that high? Oh, if you look at the Instagram or that that video that they have played, right, right, it's hilarious to look at. But it looked like that to me. It's like it had to wow. be close to fifty okay. feet, just so that he could move in because I believe it's a wide shot, right? <laughs> and then him coming down from the sky slowly ascending. That was down. a very that was a very cool scene because you would think that he's there to help. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, well, you know, we'll. I guess we'll reveal basically, you know, what transpires at the end yeah. later on. But yeah, so yeah, we don't have to go in any particular order. But yeah, <laughs> at the very end, literally, it's it's Reservoir Dogs on the campus of Godolkin because the uh, the crazy kids were let out to play, like we were talking about. So the ones that were being experimented on just come out and start attacking a lot of the other students. Meanwhile, within that point, you have uh, Ashley Barrett in a meeting at Godolkin University going through all the students of who could be a possible contender for the seven. And they're looking at specific ones like they passed over Marie because ooh, Bloodborne style superhero powers. No, we don't want to do that. They look at. Oh, what's the kid's name? Uh, uh, Andre. Andre. Andre yeah. and the fact then she's looking at his social media, his interests and likes, and she goes, Ugh, this is terrible <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's a Dor whole it's a whole, you know, it's a whole Hollywood TV thing. You know, it's like, yeah. a, OK, who's popular? And, you know, it doesn't matter who could that we they bank on, you know? Yeah, exactly. Who could we bank? Who's bankable? That's exactly what they're they're looking at. But they uh, they are having this meeting and during this time, they don't even hear the alarms going off. You got one kid running. Uh, the first one that comes out attacks the social media authority of uh, Godolkin University. Apparently, he his legs were broken, his arms were broken or something was broken on him. And he finally got back and he was talking and he's and he sees the person coming up and they're ready to he sees what they already did. They attacked the student while running down the hallway or whatever. And he's like, I got to stop this. So he does that um, sonic thing that kind of renders them powerless or right. He had, them. Yeah, he has some kind of like device and then he puts it in her freaking mouth and it just kind of blows up her head. Oh, yeah. It was like, oh, this is like all reservoir dogs. Now it's like it's it's down to the point where it's going to be a bloody mess and everybody's getting like <laughs> killed in some way. So, yeah, he does that to her and then he has to call and let people know. And then he eventually meets his end up at a certain point, too, uh, during the episode. I, I forget if, if it's moments after, but I didn't put that in my notes. <laughs> so, so how, how long ago I actually watched the episode, but I do remember it. And uh, yeah, they, the those kids get out. They start like uh, the one kid. I think it was Rufus that's out there. No dick who's trying to do something for his Instagram <laughs> no and dick. the kid comes out 
and well, he's got none. She, Marie blew that up. The uh, the other kid comes out that uh, was in the woods, quote unquote woods, <laughs> experimental. Right. And uh, he was like, "Oh, you're interrupting my Insta, man! What the hell?" Blah, 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 blah. And the next thing you know, he sees and he gets out of the way, but he's off to the back and he's still trying to do it on his own. But within that time, the kid attacks somebody else, and he goes, "Ooh!" And he starts filming it live. Yeah. And, and then you got another kid coming out, and then when uh, the alarm rings, I don't know if it was the uh, media content creator or ho- head of. For Godolkin University, uh, they they hit an alarm thing for where that sonic noise that disrupts everybody disrupts anybody who's a soup from a soup, you know, yeah, yeah, who has uh, V juice in them. So that goes off on campus and rendering all the students because he sees it's out, it's chaos. Yeah, and uh, one kid who, if you think about it, it looks like uh, what's his name, Black Bolt. With the voice, and he just shuts down with his voice. It's very much like a sonic boom himself with his vocal powers, and it and it just disrupts everything. Kill, like breaks all glasses, breaks the actual uh, speakers that are that are projecting the sonic noise to render right. them powerless. So that goes away, and then it's back at it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, they, like I said, they, they, it's just. I mean. I guess the precautions they took. I mean, once you know that, you know, Godolkin was basically a front for, you know, experimenting on them. Mm -hmm. And then you start seeing all the security measures they had. It was, that's when, you know, everything kind of makes sense. It's like, of course they would have that because they're trying to control (laughs) these kids and all that stuff. You know, they're not really trying to protect them. So, yeah, it's just... uh, (laughs) Uh, you know, the, I would say this show, um, my opinion of this show was that it started very, you know, it started, I'm not going to say super strong, but it started pretty good. Yeah. It got better. Mm-hmm. And then very towards the end, you know, it, it did the typical boys thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Like you and I were discussing, you know, before the show started. Yeah. But it's not a show that I probably would go back to watch. Um, yeah. and it's not because I didn't like it, but it wasn't, it, it's not a show that intrigued, you know, that it's shows, not like a movie that you could watch over and over again, that over you love, and over, right? Exactly. Like Endgame, or there are certain shows that people have a love for because it was written very well that, you know, I know a lot of older people, obviously I was, I grew up, we grew up in the same generation, we're in the same generation, but MASH was around and people loved that show and they could still watch it to this day. Right. When it's on TBS or something on a on a marathon or something. <laughs> and just but that this wouldn't be a show. I agree with you. I, I would be like if it was on, I'd leave it on as background and be like, oh, that's who hold on. There's that cool scene. Let me go watch it. OK. All right. That, I had you my know what? Fun. It, interesting you say <laughs> that, but that's exactly it. It's like if it comes on, you're like, oh, OK. I'll give it a watch a little I'll bit. I'll give it again. a watch, but <laughs> not like, hey, like, like, I think, like I said, you and I were talking about like, um. I was talking about, uh, what is it, uh, Blue Eye Samurai. So Blue Eye Samurai, that came out on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, such a beautifully done show. And very violent, but, man, the story is great. Everything about it is just such an amazing show. I would find any excuse to go watch it again. Okay. This, was, this was not that. And yeah. I don't know why, even though I enjoyed the show, I don't know if it's because, honestly, while the show was good, mm-hmm. I don't think the cast is, for me, I don't think the cast is enough for me to go watch it. Maybe for younger kids it is. You know, it's like, oh, wow, well, you know, yeah, of course, I want to watch all these, you know, young kids and stuff. For me, <laughs> it wasn't. It just wasn't yeah. one of those shows like, oh, for me, it was just. You can't really relate to it, is what it is. We're at an age that's older that I think that's yeah, why. Maybe. And, uh, I mean, I understood the social uh, commentaries. I yeah. definitely understood that, mm-hmm. uh, which was very, very in your face. And I commend the writers and everybody for that. Yeah. And it's also it, that is very challenging to the world as it is because correct. You're, you're, you're setting yourself up for cancel culture at that point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
But that being said, none of these actors impressed, engaged you personally. Engaged me or impressed me enough for me to go, yeah. oh, you know, like uh, the 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 actress uh, who does Victoria. Mm -hmm. She's very intriguing to watch. I mean, she's a beautiful woman, of course, but yeah. she's very intriguing to watch. I have seen her in other uh in other projects and whenever i see that she is in a project or stuff i'm actually intrigued to watch her because she's actually i think pretty good yeah none of these kids really made me go oh Gave this it to you this, yeah this, this one person's acting or whatever was so fantastic and so amazing that i have to watch it again yeah again the show was good yeah. I just can't say I I can't point to any individual in the cast that stood out for me. I could only say about three, maybe, but I the way I view it, just how you're saying it and explaining right. it, it's kind of like uh, how certain shows like I didn't understand the fandom. Supernatural has a huge fandom. Steve who, right. Brown, who does the the podcast with us, too. He's a huge Supernatural fan. I watched a bit of it, but I never got grasped into it. I didn't really got grappled with it. And it lasted so many seasons, and it was highly rated, and it was done. I'm, I could tell the writing was really good in it. Right. But, and then same thing with, uh, but that that uh, that appealed to both older and younger audiences. Whereas mm -hmm. like with Vampire Diaries, like I'm going to, like of all things, I'll mention it because I'm a huge fan of The Walking Dead in its early years. Towards the end, uh, the last few seasons were kind of fell short. I'm glad Angela Kang did what she did, but I watch it. I'm a completionist and I, I loved what she had to offer. It was hit or miss with a lot of episodes, but Vampire Diaries, I see that I'm going to this convention, but they had it split for a Walking Dead and a Vampire Diaries one. And I'm like, <laughs> I have no clue as to what this fandom is, but apparently is it's it was extremely popular. And it attracted a specific uh, generation. And I realized it's with The Walking Dead, it was multi generational. It appealed to old uh, and younger audiences. Uh, I would say middle age all the way down to teen or preteen. Right. Because families were getting into involved with it, which is pretty odd for a horror kind of drama hmm. show from based on a horror zombie comic. But Vampire Diaries had its own niche. I think that what th this is what they were trying to appeal with Gen V for the superhero aspect, but the extreme superhero aspect of it. All right. Now, I, I give the actors credit. I thought they were they were very well with the uh, with with all the writing that they were given to and were acted it very well. They portrayed their characters well, like like Rob was saying and how I feel, too is that they don't really stand out, stand out, but I could see what if they did something else that was standard drama or comedy, possibly. Uh, I could see them coming out, like uh, Derek Liu and uh, London Thor, who both play Jordan Lee. I could see that, but we didn't really get to see too much of Donald, of Derek Liu as, as uh, Jordan Lee, I think. Right. We got more of London Thor. Uh, I would say Kate Dunlap, uh, Maddie, who plays played by Maddie Phillips, she uh, she was really good. I I could see her because she's got that that look about her for an actress that could work. Uh, definitely Lizzie Broadway, who plays uh, Little Cricket or Emma Meyer. I, right. I I could see that. And then obviously, uh, you know, you had Arnold Schwarzenegger's son Patrick Schwarzenegger in it, but this is the beginning of his career, so. I see this as a stepping stone for a lot of them because they're all new. And I think that's what it is. I think I give them props for what they go to going on next. I'll look out for them, obviously. But it's not something that would captivate me. For them, this works for the fact that it the show grabbed a lot of people's attention. And this will get them work later on, I think. Or even now, probably for the fact hmm. the show's uh, been on already and and it's gotten some uh, respectful reviews here and there. But like you said, I the, the show, this will come and go. And then we'll get the new season. And then it'll be a whole new, oh, I got to watch that. 
because it's going to pick up from where it left off or where maybe right. even what the boys does. But the boys will be continuously over, very popular for what it's been doing. Uh, when it first came out on the scene, it was very it was like the extreme. We've never saw this before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But now it's like it. sometimes everything has its run, too. It's like, oh, yeah, it's been done. Oh, OK, it's the same thing. And then it runs its course and then it, or it just doesn't get picked up or they end it at a certain point. But yeah, we just got to see where things go on that. But like I said, you know, it's. I'm sure the second season is going to be great, too. Yeah. Um, and I can't like I said, I can't wait to watch um, the new season of the boys and all these things. Mm hmm. Uh, but I think we discussed, like we discussed in other podcasts and other podcasts have discussed, you know, discussed, <laughs> you know, there is that, you know, a bit of that, um, superhero fatigue and stuff like that. There is. Yeah. And right now, you know, like I, I, it's funny cause I just finished watching, um, um, Paramount plus I finished watching the lioness. Right. And the okay. Linus is basically a political thriller with a CIA, you know, special forces team or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And Zoe Saldana's in it. Uh, Nicole Kidman, uh, Morgan Freeman is in it. Some some really great actors. And it was actually very good. It was 10 episodes or eight episodes, whatever it was. But it was such a great show. It's like, you know, it's the same thing with like... um uh, Monarch is it's such a great show mm -hmm. and it's so away from the superhero stuff mm -hmm. that it makes you appreciate it even more. Yeah. So I look forward to those as a matter of fact. And, and let me tell you, like, I think uh, Linus has been out for a while, but I just said, you know what? Let me finally watch this. And the first episode kind of piqued my interest and I kept watching and I was like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. But it's I, I, as I said before, and, and especially in my podcast, I said, you know what? I just think that the all these studios need to regroup and start to really come out with some great quality stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have it, you know. We don't have to have ten of these things a year. We don't have to have quantity. We want quality over what you've been dishing out. We've been saying this for a while, for not just here, but on your podcast too. Yeah, and it makes sense. It does, and I know that Marvel's looking to hold back on certain stuff now. Feige's like control. I think uh, Warner Brothers will probably be doing that. Sony, on the other hand, <laughs> what you got? Madam Web. You got oh. <laughs> what else? Craven, coming? Craven the Craven Hunter. Hunter, Venom Three. Uh, uh. What else is coming out? Like it, they're they're really capitalizing on the uh, the Spider Man. Yeah, be I've, because they all of a sudden it's like, well, listen, Spider Man is our property. Look how great that did. And I was like, dude, dude stop. MCU did that, not yeah, you guys. Yeah, uh, Feige was helping you. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> For so that's what exactly. So all of a sudden they're like, oh, oh, and they did very well with Venom. The first Venom, listen, the first. Let's be honest, Venom is not a great movie at all. No, I don't not. think it's great. It's a fun movie, and it's it was different, you know, than the Spider-Man stuff that they were throwing out. Mm -hmm. So it became popular, and but dude, then you had Carnage, then you had Morbius. <laughs> oh, Morbius was terrible. Morbius was, you know, not great, and it's like, no, nope, they didn't learn a single thing. And then you watch the trailer for these new things, you're like, yep. And and I believe, and I deeply, deeply believe this. Because DC has not had a great run, because you know Sony doing what they did, mm -hmm. Marvel Marvel stumbling a bit. I how can I say some of these movies that came out in the last in this last phase? I truly believe that if that type of caliber movie would have come out within the first 10 years of Marvel, mm. Marvel, we still would have been like, you know what? That was still pretty good. Yeah, that is true. I, but I have a feeling about that, but all of a sudden after that, it just <laughs> like, I mean, if there was a trade-off, 
okay, Marvel's yeah. not doing very well, but holy shit, DC now is doing amazing stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think we'll still be peaked. It was like, all right, now it's DC's turn. Let's go see what they're doing. But when you have, well, DC's been doing not that great. And then all of a sudden you have all these other superhero um, properties not doing great. And then Marvel starts and you're like, okay, I'm freaking done. You got so many people that have checked out. <laughs> and it seems like I'm almost one of those people. I'm uh, almost one of those those people. I'm just like, just... Why, why am I suffering through this still? And you feel that. Like, and I'll oh. continue to suffer through it because this is what I do, you know. But, Same here. But, but I'm not know, saying I'm suffering. I could find something that I do uh, that I that appeals to me and I like about it. And that's the reason why I I'm, still. I'm going to have to take the Mark Bernard. Uh, <laughs> See. <laughs> well, because he. So in the last episode of. Uh, of. Of. Um, Fat Man Beyond, but yeah, uh, yeah, Fat Man Beyond. <laughs> uh, they were talking about you know how you you know I, I think how you haters you know if you're how can you instead of sounding like a hater, mm-hmm. you know because uh, the the big thing nowadays is that in YouTube you see so many people you know the first thing you see is you know some kind of what I would call the clickbait, you know, they'll say something like, Oh my God, yeah, you know, this is failing and all this stuff, you know, just <laughs> so they could get clicks. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. which is probably something I'm going to start doing. Unfortunately, I don't know. No, but somebody asked the question, how can you continue to get those clicks without being that way? But mm-hmm. Mark Bernard says something very interesting that while he, you know, while he's a writer, Nobody wants to hear a writer bitch. What they want is, okay, what solution can you come up with? And he said, the best thing to do is instead of bitching about it, hey, here's a solution for what's going on. Or, hey, here are the things that I liked. (laughs) You know, even (laughs) though there's like about 50 things that are bad. But I did like this one little thing here. Exactly. And, that, and that's a way to stay positive about it. Yeah. And, you know, so that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funniest, too, is speak about Mark Menarden. I saw something and you and I have the Marvel's entertaining. We didn't do a, a, a review of it, but overall, my, my feelings about it. I went to go see it. There were some things that I had problems with. Right. There, I... It was entertaining. It gave a build up. The story was lack in certain parts, but I did enjoy a lot of aspects within the movie itself. Now, right. Mark Bernard, after I watched the movie and I got it, I, I went to a matinee. I didn't go to AMC, uh, an AMC experience or anything. I went to a local theater with, in a, for a matinee. So I only had to pay like nine bucks to get in. But I. AMC I'm, pass. I'm going to tell you right now, just to the AMC pass, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, he, he doesn't get uh, money for that too, people. So, but yeah, I, uh, I, I watch and I, and I looked at my Instagram thing real quick in my car just to see. And I looked and it, it was an actual Insta or, or tweet. Maybe no, cause he was done with Twitter. So it was him saying, Oh, so the Marvels thought it was great and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Mark Bernard saying that what is going on? So, I didn't really get a chance to listen or watch that particular episode, but <laughs> uh, the first thing I thought of coming out of that movie is like, Bernard's going to rip that movie apart and Kevin's going to just say, I love it. Right. <laughs> no, I think they discussed the fact that, you know, it wasn't great, but, you know, they didn't say that it, how can I say, I, I don't know if I could say that the Marvels was, the Marvels had some nice little moments yeah but there were other moments that uh, they a kind of and i don't know if it's because for like the last six months all i have been hearing is how the marvels have had to go through reshoots which any any movie does do that but yeah. reshoots because it has tested so bad and rewrites too and rewrites fact. and all yeah. these things yeah. so I, I went into it very skeptical and maybe that's a part of me that's just like eh. I don't think this is going to be good. 
it soured your thought before you even went in oh there. Oh my to god, see it it, it kind of did, but you know, I'm, I'm a glutton for punishment. If it's a Marvel <laughs> movie, I am going to go see it in the movies. Yeah. So you know, so they're still going to get my freaking money. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not, it's not like they're not. I just think that. But you know, like like we were talking about, you know, going back to Gen V, it's like you know the whole superhero fatigue and all that stuff. Yeah. It's sometimes a little too much. And I think Gen V being an offshoot of the boys, uh, good idea. Mm -hmm. But at this moment in time where we're at, maybe it was not the right time to release this entire show. Correct. I could be wrong. Um, but it has been doing fairly well in the ratings and all that stuff. And that's why they gave it, you know, a, a second shot. season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, to continue on our thoughts, too, about Gen V, because I think we digressed way so much. <laughs> way too much. So uh, the basically uh, one thing I, I liked was and it, it was the biggest part of the episode was the chaos on the campus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> and the, the chaos on the campus. But the, there was one funny part before it ensued even further which was literally the drama teacher, Adam, who we saw his show last episode with Kate and, and Andre on, on the TV. They actually were watching the movie that he was in because he was not part of the seven. He was one of the people who was soups that they that Vought had promoted and all right. he did was, was movies and stuff. And I guess he was like more like a kid actor with his powers, but he was also, you know, he was really creepy. <laughs> Still is. Uh, Sam, you know, Sam tries to choke him and Emma basically interrupts because he was like, oh, this is my. And then and then Adam starts running to the office where Ashley is and states that he, he would tell everyone what they did in the bathroom at the pediatric cancer fundraiser, which was such a funny moment because he's like, OK, 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 let him in. <laughs> like a, but he uh, keeps going and she's like, can somebody let him uh, can just somebody <laughs> let him in and you should stop talking now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't want that out. I <laughs> don't it's like, don't remember you let me wear your wig. Uh, no. <laughs> listen, man. I, as soon as he said that, I'm like, listen, the cat, the cat's out of the bag. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's like they already know you guys. Uh, they're so or, or whatever extra kinky thing that she let you, you do to her. Who knows? Whatever you let out, I'm <laughs> gonna find out somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but while that is ensuing, that it's like Ashley at that point is trying to uh, coerce certain. Uh, students to take out all these other students that are doing things. Oh, uh, we will make you one of the seven and all these fake promises. And right. she does that with Marie. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and she calls Marie to do all this. And then it's like Marie shoots it down and everything. She just wants to do the right thing. And basically because all the soups are trying to come into their office, do the same thing, do damage to them. They, uh, yeah, then the, th then we see what's happening. And then Andre is trying to stop, uh, some kid with a superpower with, uh, with the helicopter. They were like pulling the helicopter down, looking to crash it. And, uh, Andre helps the, the landing of it with his powers, which is like, you know, like Magneto, like you were saying before, or even his father polarity would do pulling it down. Uh, Marie, we see Marie using her powers in ways we haven't even seen before, which is pretty cool. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, she 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 kind of develops like, you know, this um, she doesn't need to cut herself in order to actually use her powers. She uses everybody else's blood. She could just use people's blood, you know, in that sense, because, uh, man, let me tell you, when uh, Kate was about to uh, touch. Who was it, Andre? Yeah. Or right? She blew up Kate's arm just by <laughs> thinking about it. And I was like, oh, she became like Victoria now. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and I was like, oh, can't well, you only have one hand left to touch people with lady. And now yeah. they're gonna call you Stumpy. Uh <laughs> the 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 funniest was is the uh what uh, with like the coolest part, I I think, not funny, with Marie's power that we get to see. Uh Roof is coming out and he's completely naked, so you can't see him. He's invisible, but right. she is able to see his blood inside his body to Correct. know to do something to him. 
So that's a new power scheme that she's got that she learned on her own, apparently, through uh, being. Through Vic- uh, it was through Victoria because Victoria was the one that said, feel like, look into, you know, something, look into me. And that's how all of a sudden she found out, oh, wait, Victoria has uh, that uh, compound V or whatever it is in mm-hmm. her blood. Yeah. And so it was that part where she was about to cut herself and then she went, oh, wait. And then she, but I think that's when she thought, oh, I could do the same thing I did with Victoria, which is mm-hmm. I could try to kind of like sense the blood from somebody else and where they're at. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. It's like, okay, that's kind of an, an evolution of her, of her, powers. her powers and yeah. stuff like that, which I thought was really cool. So, yeah, she's like a human bloodhound. <laughs> at that point if you think about it <laughs> but uh we, we also see something out of emma as well emma gets so upset with sam when trying to convince him to stop doing everything before the crazy chaos happens right on campus she turns small without puking yeah was it because she was crying that's the thought that's the part that i didn't understand was, was it that an alice started- in wonderland thing where she yeah. was crying so much that it <laughs> exactly i was like was it because of the crime but dude how fucked up was sam, sam, sam i was like at that moment i was like sam you're such a dick i like, mean he was so mean to her the way he was and it's yeah. like wow you know Whatever happens to this kid, maybe he deserves it. I don't know. It was just kind of one of those really yeah. it left it left like that really sour thing in me about Sam, which is like, you know what? I don't feel sorry for you anymore. Yeah, I You're don't feel sorry dick. for you. I always not I'm not rooting for you anymore because you yeah. turned into a dick. <laughs> it was the way he treated her, which I just thought it was just because like it really became it how can I say it became that moment where, you know. You have a guy who likes his girl or something like that, but next thing you know, he finds other friends and he becomes this dude that becomes just, toxic. Yeah, you're right. And it's like, wow, what happened to the kid that she met? You know, all yeah. of a sudden you hang out with different people and you become an asshole. Mm. And it happened like within a flash of a second in one episode. It happened. Um, and granted that it's because you know I know that he was hurt. And they abused them and all these things. But, man, all she's ever tried to do was help them. Mm. So, yeah, that was my uh, my thing on that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course, Sam keeps seeing Luke. That's the other part. Oh. That even though he went off and did all those things as a part of his subconscious telling him, dude, mm-hmm. all the, everything you're trying to do is wrong. And it's manifesting itself into Luke. So, so he's not listening to that inner voice of his. True. Yeah, yeah, I, and I and that's going to be a constant. I think. I think that's how uh, Schwarzenegger is still going to be in the next season if they do, right? Because Stan's still going to be around. He's still going to be in his subconscious, and they could always use flashbacks. But yeah, uh, and also regarding that 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 crazy fight where we do see Kate's arm get blasted off. Oh but my god, that was thing, awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. And then uh, Maverick, uh, we, I think it was like the first time we actually saw the actor who played Maverick. <laughs> and, I think so, too. Yeah. <laughs> and naked on the ground after she just like took him out. But that's uh, just, that, so when Kate's arm blows up, that's mm-hmm. when Homelander shows up. Correct. And then says, what kind of a person? Oh, no. What kind of an animal? Uh, attacks you know, its own. Attacks its own. Pretty much, you, yeah. Yeah, and you would think he's there to help. No. No, he's just because, you know, and, and that's what that's what leads this whole thing to, I guess, the boys, where that's going to be really interesting because I think he's showing his colors more and more, I think, in public. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think Victoria's taking the the virus. I, that's going to play, that's going to, play a big thing i think in the boys and stuff like that but the fact that vaught frames a whole group and says that they went on a murdering rampage instead of actually the uh the the woods mm-hmm. 
and they put them on the news and next thing you know they wake up all locked up in a place with no doors <laughs> yeah but the the oddest thing though is homelander blasts marie but yet she is unharmed that was yeah. a full blow and i'm like i want to see what really happened how the hell did she survive that i mean even the even uh who was it was it uh was it andre said you took a full blast from him and you woke up most people would have never done that or it would be dead <laughs> yeah so that's also going to be so uh, i'm just wondering what power what other powers that she has yeah that is associated maybe just like deadpool her body could fall into parts and then she could come back together <laughs> <laughs> and not be as crazy that as would Wade. be <laughs> that would be awesome if she had De- Deadpool's uh, sense of humor, I could. <laughs> you know what? That's what that that's what they need. I think this show needs a Deadpool character. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one that could actually start. What is it they call the the he, the third the third wall or something like that? Breaking or the they, fourth wall. Yeah, breaking the fourth wall or something where he yeah, exactly he would break the fourth wall all the time. You know, and look look into the camera and talk to the audience out there. <laughs> that would I think would be fantastic. Yeah, they they do wake up in what would be uh, a room with no doors or windows or anything. It's completely sealed, and they that's how pretty much it ends. But they uh, don't know who their captors are. I'm assuming it's going to be uh, Godolkin University or Vought itself, right? So I'm assuming more Vought. And I think that's what's going to lead us. And we already have a lead into the uh, for the, the next season of The Boys. But they uh, they on the news because they could see a TV. <clears throat> they have Sam and Kate on there and they're or we see it as uh, like a news flash of uh, how like two Godokan University students saved everybody along with Homelander and blah, blah, blah. And they are the true guardians of Godokan. Yeah, exactly. It's like the actual two uh, real people that are, um, that were actually started causing all that, uh, yeah. all that chaos. Like I said, it, Vought basically set them up. Hmm. So, but then yeah. we, we move into, uh, the, uh, the, the nice uh, tease ender, which would be Billy Butcher coming <laughs> out and is the sea word all the time. <laughs> yeah, he discover he discovers the woods. And what was it that he said at the end? I forgot. I, he said something. I mean, he always says something, you know, crazy. But the fact that you see his face, you're like, oh, like, you know, like this whole thing is just going to be. I, I keep wondering if they're going to do like like an Avengers event type of thing where it's like, OK, so everything comes together. Yeah. And, you know, towards the end of like With whatever the university season. and the boys and then they uh, it's like a full out fight yeah. or they <laughs> utilize some of the students for Butcher's crew to take over and do and then maybe, you know, Dewey's there and he's got his own team and. And yeah, then- <laughs> I guarantee that. I mean, I wouldn't even I wouldn't be surprised if Invincible showed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Man. But uh, yeah, that that that's pretty much our coverage. The uh, the only two thing, uh, things I have is like I have one quote out of the whole episode, which I did enjoy and I loved it. It's like Kate, when the guy comes out after she releases him from the woods to uh-huh. go and leave. And Kate goes, when was the last time you saw sunlight? Because he's so pale. And the prisoner just goes, is Gangnam style a thing? (laughs) (laughs) I didn't understand what he said. Uh, Maybe because I just wasn't paying attention at that very moment. But I didn't realize that's what he said. That's actually pretty cool. It's pretty funny. It's like, wow. I don't think a lot of kids nowadays remember what Gangnam Style was. It's so long ago. You're talking it's 23 years, I think. Listen, be be happy you don't. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The only other thing I have is one note that I took down because the music in the the show and this particular episode, they end on with a cool song, uh, The Kids in America. But by the muffs. And I thought it was uh, done very well. I like that. Uh, like I said, with a lot of these shows that are popular like this, Gen v, uh, Gen v, The Boys, 
uh, even with um, Yellow Jackets, shows like that that are presenting all these this cool music. I right. revisited music like with this because they've done this that with this, and we've talked about music that was done on the show, but uh, and it was redone. You know, kind of like me loving the idea of uh, the Bangles back in the day doing Hazy Shade of Winter, which was a Simon and Garfunkel song too, years and years ago. But I like when uh, new bands put out new versions at times, and I, I like the difference. So, yeah, it, there's got to be a Spotify playlist. So if you guys are interested in the music that they have, I'm pretty sure Spotify has one out there. Somebody made their own and then it I was just going to say, I'm sure somebody made something. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, that was something cool that I did enjoy within the episode. But that's cool. about it. That's all I had for this particular episode. But I'm thankful that we're getting uh, the boys coming soon with the new season. I'm loving that they kind of like put that influence in there. We got basically Billy Butcher and we got Ashley Barrett back in this in this particular episode so it's like a callback to the boys as well as uh anthony star as uh homelander so I'm, I'm glad that we get that and then it gives us something to look forward to when the boys does return but uh yeah with that that i think we covered those two episodes and, yeah we did yeah so but that uh we'll go into well where listeners well, yeah, where listeners could hear you, Rob. Uh, you can listen to me on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, where we cover movies that failed at the box, big tentpole movies uh, <laughs> that failed at the box office or with critics, and we try to give it our own spin and see how we can make it better. We also do a top five um, draft when it comes to film so it could be directors movies actors you know we always have fun with that mm -hmm. and we also have our section called behind the score where we cover a well-known uh movie composer and we cover their work and yeah that and sometimes i'm here <laughs> uh, or adrenaline cinema too which or, you could also hear me on too uh, not only you could hear me here on Pounds to Pixels podcast, but you could also hear me on Adrenaline Cinema podcast. Uh, we haven't put out anything in a while, but I'm working on stuff for you guys to to listen to this coming month for at least uh, for December. Uh, I had something that was out in November. I got one out, thankfully, uh, but that was for Total Recall. But I'm looking to do more. It's just a matter of scheduling. Like I said, it's been tough a lot lately, but you've heard me also on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition as well. Yep. Uh, you could currently hear me on the podcast uh, slash Wilhelm podcast about Monarch, the legacy of beasts. So you'd hear me on that coverage. It's a it's a dual podcast between both uh, podcast and Wilhelm. So Ben Beck and I are covering that. People will be on to help cover. I believe, Rob, you're next for episode four with me and Ben. So we'll be covering that episode. And then I believe paik and daphne from run for your lives will show up as well as jason kabasi himself who's a head podcast guy right so you can hear me there uh and that's pretty much it so <laughs> uh with with that uh we didn't put anything out there for feedback for this uh i put it out a long time ago because originally we thought we were going to do five six seven and eight but it became a little bit too much and it was like getting late that night so uh <laughs> With uh, if you choose to send any feedback, which we do really appreciate, all you have to do is go to our Facebook group, which would be easy facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. Uh, it's linked to our Instagram as well. So, generally, what I do is take an image of what we're covering of the show, movie, episode, or what we're the topic we're doing, and just say leave them in the comments below. Do so if you can. All you have to do is follow us on Facebook. And that's facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels or on Instagram at panels to pixels podcast. So uh, all you have to do is subscribe and, you know, do all that just like on YouTube as well, because uh, I post all the episodes on YouTube as well for podcasts as well as video. Uh, all you have to do is search for panels to pixels podcast, subscribe, ring the bell so you'd be notified when the new episode is up. Give us a thumbs up. 
or even rate us because they have ratings as well. Uh, but you could just leave your mess. You know, you could comment on the actual episode. So if you have something that you want to say and I get notified, I will actually I've done it before. So I'll read it on the podcast. So even if it's something that we've done before an older episode or something that we covered before that was a long time ago, but you still have an opinion about it, please send it on over. Do so. And uh, you could email us standard texted emails appreciated and we'll read it. Uh, or if you want, you could just record yourself and send it as an attachment of voice. So that way uh, you can be part of the podcast as well. All you have to do is send that to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. So uh, it's very simple. And then panel, it's basically panels to spelt out to and pixels one at gmail.com. Uh, I mentioned YouTube, but the funny thing is, is if you do search just panels to pixels, you'll get Josh. And Josh is in, in in England. So I love Josh's work on, on his Panels to Pixels. But this is called Panels to Pixels podcast. So keep that in mind. But I, if you're really interested in what he does, he does everything superhero that's related to gaming, cartoons, everything else, or the nostalgia of certain uh, superhero stuff, even in comics. So check that out. But with that, I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Rob. A different panel, different pixels, same podcast. This was Panels to Pixels podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Uh, adios. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye.